Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2, where I'm going to attempt to make a space shuttle, a stock space shuttle. At some point or another, I'm going to get a stock space shuttle. It might be in this video, it might be in the next video, or it might be after a patch, depending on whether we encounter some glitch where I decide that it's probably better to wait. But I insist on having a space shuttle, and we will see if I can manage it. So here we've got the old Mark III cockpit looking spiffier and we are going to want those Mark III parts, so I'm just going to search for Mark III. This isn't meant to be a tutorial. I don't even know if I can achieve it, so yeah, I can't say, okay, this is how you do it, uh, because I don't know if it's going to work or not. We are going to find that out together. It is a sort of a uh, bit of suspense. So we've got the engine mount that we want in the back. I want it to have roughly the same capabilities as the shell. This looks like it's a little bit short. So I'm going to put an extra tank in the back. Uh, we wanted to have, I'm going to make it a replica of the STS space shuttle and the vector engine is our engine of choice, um, just for looks, right? Uh, capability, it might be a little bit powerful, uh, but we don't have the a sort of smaller, tighter version of the skipper um, with a different mount. The skipper might be a better choice overall in terms of thrust because the vector has a lot more thrust. It's got uh, well, actually, it's only 850 these days. It used to be a thousand, but the skipper's got 600, which might be less OP. We are going to need to tilt these, though exactly how we are going to tilt these is still up for grabs. Okay, uh, to be honest, they're a little bit close together. So maybe a tick down off of the node for these two. Okay, and... Hopefully the vector still has plenty of gimbling. Yes, it's 10.5 degrees, so that's proper enough. And then we're going to see about the aerodynamics. Now, they've perhaps gotten rid of... Yeah, I think gotten rid of the one that looks exactly like the shuttle vertical stabilizer. That's a shame. Um, let's see what large does for us. Oh, that's a bit too large, isn't it? I do like... V-tail shuttles. Uh, I think Rocketology on Twitch likes them too. Uh, but we'll we'll go with a single fin for as a as a starter. Uh, this doesn't look exactly right, does it? Uh, we can tweak it like this. The little wrench allows us to do it as a procedural. And the top isn't going to look quite right, but we could. Uh, just make it a little bit thinner, root length. That's a little bit more like it. Uh, the bottom bit is straight on the real space shuttle. Let's get a medium wing part first, and then we can make a straight bit. Oh, that's the control surface. We don't want any control surface. That's zero span. That's too long. A uh, bit here. Maybe the small one will not have as much length because that's not going to work for that little part, the straight part of the wing there. Oh, this is better. Okay, once we close that thing's dialogue, we can move it. We can also tuck these in a bit. Ah, shoot. And I'll get down to painting it some other time. Uh, that might be a little bit too big. But for now, I'll, I'll judge that later. Brute length, let's see. Oh, uh, the medium wing is fine. The wingspan on uh, this one is just not going to work out for us, I don't think. And when I put the wingspan to zero, the wing angle doesn't work anymore. The coloration, if it's going to be symmetrical like this, uh, this gray part it should be on top on the right side as well instead of on the bottom. So symmetry and the wing parts don't seem to work out right when we're in mirror symmetry. Oh, now it's changed. Okay, I take it back. It, this, uh, it was only when we had the, this. Only when we have this dialogue up is it wrong like that. Then when we close that, it fixes itself. Yeah, as expected, this part is just too wide. Well, even a small wing can span the whole thing. Uh, the root can span the whole thing, I mean. So I guess we'll go with a small one. 
For the time being, I think that's not too bad. No, I have no idea about the actual aerodynamics here. And even this shuttle doesn't have a flat bottom, it looks like. Landing gear? Basically still the original type, but shinier. Where is our center of mass? Okay, well these are a little bit small for the purpose. And we want them behind the center of mass, otherwise uh, it's gonna flop quite a lot. But actually this th this tank is gonna drain and really should be a mod propellant tank. Um, right now it's just methane. Ah, oh, I don't want just methane. Okay, I've got I've got the wrong tank there. I wanted Ideally I'd want a mod propellant tank. I guess we can use these. I think we're going to have mod propellant engines as our OMS engines, the orbital engines. So that'll be better. And we should probably be coming down without the mod propellant all in there. So if it's out, center mass doesn't seem to be moving when it's out. That's not right. That, that, that center mass should, let me t uh, remind it to do something. Okay, well, um, let's see. So it's there right now, and then we load it, and then I toggle the center mass again. It sort of moves, but I think it should move quite a lot more than that. But, okay. Anyway, uh, the point is that we're probably coming down with very little mop propellant. And we want to put the landing gear where the resulting, or close to where the resulting center of mass is. It's a little bit small on the landing gear, but, well, it's sort of more efficient that way. Oops. Okay, well, speaking of the OMS engines, uh, I, uh, the vertical stabilizer is bothering me. Maybe I'm going to end up not making custom ones and using the thuds instead. The thuds are too powerful though. The puffs are much more like it. 20 kilonewtons is just about right for the space shuttle's OMS engines. And what we can do is we can have a clip in a cone. We have, oh well, we, there's the fuel tanks. This kind of NCS 200 fuel tank with a cone on the front of him and since we're clipping it in we'll be good kerbals and not fill them up completely well not fill them up at all really because I'm not gonna have jet engine fuel well it's methane and oxidizer it used to be just uh, fuel for a jet engine I thought liquid fuel Okay, so we've got little puffs like that, and we sort of tuck them in. I'd like to fill the center spot there, even though it's not really where they ought to be, but it makes me feel better. Okay, they're, they're sort of already cantered out the way the OMS engines for the shuttle are. Oop, the vertical stabilizer is tilted like that. Oops. Did not mean to do that. See, that's when, you know... Having a V-tail is better. Now well, the OMS pods aren't perfect, but at least they're sort of there. Okay, so the shuttle itself right now has 975 meters per second, it says. And that's without payload. Let's put in a payload. And uh, the sort of normal max payload for the space shuttle is like 25 tons. That's what we want this to carry as well. So I'm going to put a... Docking port in the back, just uh, one of these. Um, that's just a docking port senior, and then we're going to have a dummy fuel tank, uh, which we can't lock. Um, let's see, uh, uh, this thing coupling Lampatron senior fuel crossfeed off. That'll do the trick, hopefully. And we'll have, that's uh, one of the orange tanks, that's 36 tons. Let's not go overboard though. Let's go with 27 tons, that's easy enough. 
So these two tanks. All right, we could have a docking port assembly in the front, but we'll make this an early test and worry about that later. Okay. One critique that I have is about this parts manager. I really don't like the parts manager. Uh, I really, when I want just one part, I just want that one part popping up when I click, right click on it. I don't need all the rest of this stuff, it's very cluttery. Okay, well, that's more or less the shuttle. I haven't told the control surfaces what to do yet. Advanced controls. I guess we should. So, no yaw on those. Pitch, no roll on those. Okay, so the outer ones will have pitch as well as roll. And then for the vertical stabilizer, just yaw. And we don't have a body flap right now, so let's grab one of those. This is a control surface, right? I think, oh, I think they think that it's a control surface as in a canard. So... Okay, okay, they're okay now. I think. Okay, we've got our body flaps in now. Alright, now the fun part. So we're going to retract the landing gear. Feel like we could probably bring those down a bit. And then retract the landing gear. It's verticalized. And then we have to have an external tank. Now here's the thing. The engine thrust has to point through the center mass of the external tank, which means the center mass has to stay fairly high. If the bottom of the external tank has all the mass, the engines aren't going to be able to point through it. So the last part of the external tank that gets emptied has to be on top. In fact, we might just, if we could lock a tank, we would probably lock the top tank just to keep the balance. The way the actual space shuttle does it is the liquid oxygen tanks on top, and the oxygen's really, really heavy. So that ensures that the center of mass of the combination of the shuttle and the external tank stays very high up. Uh, the hydrogen, which is most of the shuttle's external tank, is uh, on the bottom, but it's very light. But uh, we can't do that because uh, our hydrogen, uh, th th we're, we're not doing nuclear stuff, so. Uh, and methylox doesn't have the same relationship as hydrolox does. M methane isn't as light as hydrogen is. Flow priority. I, I don't know if we have flow priority right now. So that's a rub. What I'm going to do, and we don't really have a way of locking tanks either. So, I'm going to put a non-usable tank here to maintain balance. In other words, I'm going to put a monopropellant tank, or, or maybe even a hydrogen tank up top. But the hydrogen tanks are fairly light. They're big, but they're light. So, I don't know if they don't really serve the role. A xenon tank, but we only have small ones. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is put a dummy mob propellant tank that isn't going to be used, but it will have the mass necess uh, necessary to balance the stack. The mob propellant is very dense. And just for reference, I'm going to get a fuel line in from this tank into the shuttle. Oh, does it not want to... It wants to... Oh, it needs a, a fuel tank to attach to? Hmm. Well, it's green when attaching up there. Red there. Well, it's green there. Alright, well, we'll do with that for now. Uh, we're not reading any Delta V. And that's because of the order. 
maybe. 4,000. Well, so we have no problem there. So, let me tank one. Let me tank two. Uh, it's still reading extra Delta V when we put those on, but that's because it's reading them as the OMS fuel. Well, if there's anything that we're going to have to tweak as we go along, it's going to be the center of mass. Um, well, let's see about this color manager. Okay, uh, let's. We, it looks like we can do an orange tank here. Okay, uh, let's uh, change color manager base white, accent black for our boosters. The Clydesdales look about right. The Clydesdales look a little bit big. But the kickbacks are look a little bit too thin. This is where I really want the 1.875 meter parts. Because they probably look about right. Oh, this there is this nose cone. Oh, we've got an external... We, that, it's just a nose cone. Okay. Well, we use that. Ah, no, that's too big. What did you do? Um, okay, so we've got a problem here. They've given us the right nose cone. So we're going to have to have thicker tanks. What we're going to do is be sneaky. And we're going to hide the mod propellant tanks inside the nose cone. Because otherwise it would be the wrong form factor. And we don't have mod propellant tanks that would be correct. I don't think. I don't think we have any that are that big. Well, there's this, this one. Which is sort of the right size, but it's radial mount, so... Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, we just want to hit, hide them in the nose cone, not inside the bottom tank. Okay, we have hidden them in the nose cone. This is looking great. Now it's reading 2,877, but it still puts it in the OMS stage for some reason. Hmm. I'll accept that for now. We'll we'll work with it. We have bigger fish to fry in terms of it actually flying. We'll add separatrons if necessary. This is a little bit high for. A shuttle to be sitting. Maybe we'll add another tank at the bottom. It'd be better if uh be better if we do that. Let me delete this fuel line for now. Let's add a couple of these. TBD, huh? Interesting. 2x. There's a 2x side size potentially. Well, I'm sure hoping that that launch delta V isn't right. <laughs> We're at a launch thrust to weight ratio. But we don't have everything in the same stage right now. Now it's 1.068. No parachute. Command pod may not survive Kerbal landing. That's not how we land here. Missing RCS. That's true. We haven't fitted for docking yet. I haven't put the RCS on the OMS pods yet. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, so that we have more thrust weight ratio, we're gonna empty the bottom tanks here. Now our thrust weight ratio looks better though. Not shuttle-like though. Shuttle had a lot more thrust weight ratio. I want to point your nose cones, but that'll do. Um, the center of mass hopefully will move up a bit, but we'll see. It's not ideal right now. I sort of want to pull these out just a tad. All right. Well, first approximation here. This is the STS shuttle. Oh, did the fuel lines detach? Okay, I just undid, and yes, the fuel lines did mess up. So that's the thing to watch out for. Okay, launch clamps. In real life, the whole shuttle is held by the boosters. Um, 
I don't know if that's gotta be safe or not, but we're gonna try it. Delt V is looking suspicious. We'll have two crew members. Hill and Bob. <laughs> and we'll see how that goes. And we'll, we'll time more to daylight. Oh! Well, it all exploded immediately. That was quick. Why are we on the runway? Better question, where, are, where did they go? Shouldn't they still be around? The cockpit's just fine. Well, it's it decided runway. Okay, let's try launch pad. I don't know, it'll probably all explode too. <laughs> Here we go, folks. That looked cool. No, you're not catching up with me here. That did not look cool. Well, I guess we're gonna need a roll program. Uh, the struts aren't exactly holding it great. And orientation-wise, it doesn't seem like it knows where we are. Right? This is not the right... This is not how we're pointing. We're definitely pointing skyward. By our only control mechanism. Oh, well, you know. I've been through worse. Uh, there's no SAS control. I thought I'd put Kerbals in. Okay, Kerbals. Kerbals are in there. They're in the cockpit. There's something decouple that shouldn't decouple. Let me, let me put some extra struts. The fuel line appears to not have gone. I think putting the only launch clamps on the boosters might be overly optimistic. So yeah, let's uh, let's not do that. That is not voting well right there. Okay, well that's right. We have all the launch clamps now. Okay, well, let's see if that helps us at all. Well, Bill and Bob are in there. <laughs> okay, maybe the shuttle decoupled early and that's what happened. Okay. Well, it seems stable. We've got a lot of launch clamps, so it better be. Uh, throttle is up. Ignition. I probably wanted to time warp to daylight, but whatever. They're not counting down, though. The, the music's changed. This water deluge. That took a while. Okay, and launch. Oh, 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 towards the tower, no! Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh no! Right. We need to maybe just orient it better in the first place. Yeah. Progress though. <laughs> uh, that seems to be where we want to be. Let's see if this is better. Okay, well it won't go towards the tower. That's the important thing. Alright, uh, throttle is up and ignition. I'll skip the countdown. And launch. I'm surprised it didn't hit the launch clamps, but okay, okay. We can do this. Nighttime launch, sorry. Definitely off of the 90 degree mark here. I'm not gonna try and correct that yet. Fun begins when the boosters separate. No, fun could begin before that. 
Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. That's too much roll. <laughs> Need a joystick. <laughs> okay, booster step. Oh, they're off. They're off. Oh no, it's rolling all on its own. It's rolling all on its own now. <laughs> got the Delta V, I think. It's just a matter of whether we have the balance. But it's sure a handful. Now it's feeling a little bit better. Now, I don't like getting into tight orbits, because that's bad for rendezvous and such, so... Uh, we don't want to get too high. Maybe a hundred kilometers will be fine. But of course we want to dump the external tank. Okay, uh, cut. Uh, yeah, I'll take that as uh, external tank disposal sort of thing. Okay, now we have to switch these off. Manager. Deactivate. Okay. I should have action grouped it. And then... Okay, the puffs should be active. Okay, and... Reaction wheeling, and ignition of puffs. Oh, and if you haven't already noticed, I couldn't care less about circular orbits. Oh, it made a camera change. Okay, okay, yeah, let's get out of time warp. Ah, uh, okay. Alright, we're at 131 by 81. Um, I want a daylight launch. We'll test re-entry. I mean, it's not like we have re-entry heating anyway. So I just want to see if we can duplicate launch, considering how wiggly it was. Well, not wiggly. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, the normal wobbles. It was just like rolling a lot. I wonder if I should just put RCS on or more reaction wheels, but I feel like that might overdo it. Maybe we should reduce how much roll tendency things have, but then maybe it won't be able to control it. So, yeah, I just want to do launch again in daylight. So let's try it. I don't know if reverting is going to actually cause the fuel line to decouple some uh, or uh, detach. Some people said that that was a thing. So we are testing that. But again, sometimes it's weird the way glitches happen. A lot of times it's weird the way glitches happen. Okay, time warping. Okay, a much needed daylight launch. I could make the shuttle look better, but for now I'm I would be satisfied if it was actually functional. So, all right, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. Oh, it dips a little bit. By the way, the shuttle did have its control surfaces move during launch. It uh, was to relieve stress, but not, uh, not to actually control the vessel, it's just to relieve stress. Uh, they weren't, like, disabled or something. I'm being much more attentive to roll this time. I'm not throttling down through max Q and all that business, obviously. Okay, booster set. I haven't put any separatrons on, so... It's a minor miracle they separate fine. 
Well, with me uh, much more actively attentive to the role, I think we're doing better. Oh, just as I say that. I can't manage the camera very well while trying to manage the controls, though. I need to verify the payload actually still has its fuel, <laughs> otherwise that's uh, not good. So, well, I mean, basically a complete development of a space shuttle for you. And the key is, monopropellant tanks in the nose cone. Basically. So you can keep the balance. Now if we could have fuel prioritization, then instead of doing that, you could make sure that the top tank drains last. And that would be fine too. Okay, here we have to remember that the engines are tilted, so this is actually zero for them. Okay, that's 100 on the apoapsis. I'm gonna try and roll over and then dump the tank. A little bit nicer. Okay, separation. And we need RCS thrusters so we can separate properly. We can do a, like a small OMS burn to do that. Just get away from it, get away, get away! Uh, okay. Alright, we'll call that OMS burn 1. Ooh, the controls are a little bit flappy. Okay, let me check in the bay. No, bay. Deploy. Hello? Oh, cargo bay open. What was this deploy then? Don't deploy. I need to fix those control surfaces, they're too big. Uh, alright. That's you. Why are you not showing yourself? Gosh, and then the part manager sometimes decides not to show the details of the part. Resource manager. Right, resource manager will show it. Okay, so that that one is full and that one is full. So we did carry all the fuel that we were supposed to. So we do have our 27 tons of payload. But you know, to curb in orbit is not that much. But I just wanted a shuttle duplicate, if you will. Yeah, I've got to change that control surface. That's a little bit annoying. And we need to add RCS thrusters in the forward docking port arrangement. Oh, why, why does the tail look all like it's got camouflage on it? On this side. I didn't order a camouflage tail. Is that because I still have anti-aliasing off? What's up with that, guys? I didn't even paint the tail. That's supposed to be the default colors and it's all pixelated. That's... that's a problem. I do not wa want tech camouflage on my shuttle. Thank you. Okay, this orbital view is not my favorite. Uh, Horizon, Celestial... I guess Celestial's okay. For now. Okay, and that's good enough for now. 103 by 78 with some variation there. Uh, but we are in orbit. I will test re-entry another time. I will save the game, in fact. Uh, let's call this shuttle re-entry test. Oh, shuttle testing. Holy water shuttle testing, too. And we will revisit this shuttle in the next video. So, there you have it. Development of a space shuttle. Um, I need to fix some things, but uh, we'll bring it back down and see if we, how far from the KSC we hit. And then we'll adjust and we'll try to make sure that we can get a landing. And so we'll see where we need to deorbit in order to do that, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully we'll get some consistent results, we'll see. Uh, but there you have it. With that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.